Hi everyone, Jessica here. Today we've got a demo for you on power factor. And so uh, what we've got here on this bench is we've got a variable voltage regulator plugged directly into the wall. So with this voltage regulator, we can control the voltage that our setup is seeing that goes straight into a transformer for isolation. And the transformer eventually goes to this power strip, which we're gonna plug some different loads into. Now between the transformer and this power strip, we've got a power analyzer. And so this power analyzer shows us RMS voltage, RMS current, power, and power factor, along with the different waveforms we're seeing for voltage and current. Um, now, as you can see, we've tuned up the variable uh, voltage regulator to where our output that we're seeing here is exactly 110 volts AC. So to start, we're going to take a look at a few different loads, beginning with a, an incandescent light bulb. And so this light bulb to the grid is gonna look mostly resistive, which means that we're gonna expect its current waveform, which is green, to track um, in terms of form with the voltage waveform in yellow. So let's take a look. All right, we've got the light bulb on, and if we take a look at the current waveform, we do see the current in green track the form of the voltage. And because of that, then we've got a power factor of one which is telling us then that this looks primarily resistive to the grid. Now you can see it's pulling 50 watts, so it's a little bit power hungry, but again, it's resistive, and so the grid is happy. Now from here, we're gonna take a look at a CCFL. CCFL is next, and what's different about a CCFL is it requires a pretty high voltage to strike the CCFL on. So let's see what it looks like when we plug it in. All right, CTFL is on. We take a look at our waveforms. We see quite a funky looking current waveform. And so uh, what's actually happening here is inside of this light bulb, we've got a full bridge rectifier that's bringing in the AC voltage. And whenever the AC line voltage gets a little bit higher than the bus voltage driving uh, the light, we see an inrush of current, each half cycle charging up that bus voltage. And so this is giving us the exact characteristic we would look that we would see then for a full bridge rectifier. Now, what's the result of that? Well, the result of that power factor of 0.56, not that great, but we can see that CCFLs are quite a bit less power hungry than incandescent. So we're only pulling in about 14 watts. Now from here, we're going to take a look at a fan. Now this fan, we would expect to look primarily inductive. And the reason for that is the fan has a motor uh, that drives it, and that motor consists of quite a few different coils. And so it exhibits inductive behavior. So we plug it in, we've got the fan going now. We'll zoom into our current waveform a little bit. And we see that the current waveform is a little bit distorted, but quite notably, See, its peak comes after the peak of the voltage. So that's telling us that we are seeing the inductive behavior we'd expect to see. Uh, we've got a power factor of about 0.64, not that great, uh, pulling 17 watts. So the point of this though is to see that we get that inductive behavior with this fan. Now the last thing we're going to look at is trying to charge my tablet which is low in battery right now. So this tablet charger is rated for 44 watts. And if we plug it in and zoom out a little bit, we see very similar uh, current characteristics that we saw with the CCFL. So we see that uh, every half cycle, there's a point at which the line voltage reaches a point where it's a little bit higher than the bus voltage and we get an inrush of current, just like the full bridge rectifier we saw in the CCFL. Now, here we've got a power factor again of about 0.54, uh, but we're pulling a little more than 30 watts. And so you might imagine then, if we've got all these different loads doing this on the grid, it's probably not a very good thing for the grid's power quality. And so because of that, we've got regulations for any sort of load that is expected to pull more than 75 watts, has to have power factor correction in the converter. And so a desktop power supply, for example, is going to have power factor correction. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much.